So thank you everyone for coming out uh, tonight to the AGB digital program on the history of civil tech with Keith Tech. Um, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with the gallery, uh, the AGB is an institution nestled in the intersection of contemporary art and craft. We're home to the largest comprehensive collection of contemporary Canadian ceramics in the world, totaling of over 4,000 works. And we operate three galleries, nine studios, a greenhouse, and a community garden. So we dig our hands in the dirt, quite literally, in a way of community organizing as well as artistic production. We're a space that holds a special relationship to clay. Not only are we an institution which revolves around the presentation, the education, exhibition of clay-based arts, we also are privileged enough to look out at the Lakeshore entrance doors to Lake Ontario. It serves as a daily reminder for all of us to respect the raw material that we shape and form and give thanks to the water protectors and the land stewards. Many Indigenous nations, including the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee and Métis people on the treaty lands and territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit for our ability to continue to play, make and learn where we are. So this marks the last talk with Keith in the exhibition for uh, run for uh, Sybil Tech. Keith has been so generous with his time uh, for tours, not only with our staff and our volunteers and our membership as well, but for you all tonight um, in this digital community. Um, in recent years, Keith has turned his attention to his roots in Trinidad and his family's history. He's following his parents' footsteps in researching and writing the history of the tech family in Trinidad with an emphasis on building his aunt Sybilla Tech's legacy. The Art Gallery of Burlington worked in concert with Keith to bring the family's private collection of Sybil's collected notes, her preparatory sketches and drawings, paintings uh, and sketchbooks, as well as photographs into the public sphere, transporting the work from the walls of the family homes to the walls of the gallery. So researching, collecting, and organizing her, her life has been a full-time project for Keith. It's become, he's become an archivist and a detective, uncovering and unearthing a collection of unknown and undocumented work, along with critical reviews, catalogs, and photographs to piece together her trajectory and her artistic tra trajectory. He's meticulously penned the story of her life from her early days as a botanical illustrator, the Ministry of Culture, to the self-portraits of her later years and constructed a timeline that visualizes the overlapping influences to political and artistic movements that shaped the tech works in form and her subject matter from her everyday life to national independence. He has been actively presenting her work internationally, speaking at universities and conferences, offering engross, inform engrossing and informative lectures. And we're so grateful to have him here with us today to hear more about his unique story and her unique story. So thank you very much, Keith. I'll let you take it away. Well, thank you so very much, Suzanne, for that wonderful introduction, not only to the exhibition story and uh, of Sybil's life, but also my journey along the way here. So tonight's lecture is basically on the history of Sybil Atek. Uh, I want to present this to you. Um, just want to show you, first of all, uh, Sybil's image so you can see what she looked like. If I just get this thing to progress forward. And look like I'm frozen. I don't know why. Interesting. Just give me a moment. Technical difficulties. Okay. All right, very good. So here is uh, Sybil Attic. She was born in 1911 in Trinidad and Tobago and died in 1975. This photograph was taken in 1970. And that's me, your speaker today, uh, doing the research. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, Trinidad and Tobago is an island in the Southern Caribbean, located at the very bottom of a chain of islands in the Caribbean, next to, the, uh, to South America and to Venezuela. The research on the history of Sybil Attic and the biography project started in 2018 and it's still ongoing. What I'd like to be able to show you today is a fa the family members of the Attics here from 1963. You can see Sybil sitting on the floor and next to her over her shoulder is myself uh, on her left side, my little brother on the right, my mother, Helen Attic. 
Helen Attack has also been an instrumental person in the discovery aspects because she had a personal relationship with Sybil and was also the uh, manager of the Sybil Attic Art Galleries. But I came to realize that my mother was getting on in age, so I asked myself, how can I, as a family member of the Attic family, represent her estate without knowing about her life and art? So I knew her as a child. I did not know her as an adult. And at this point, I'm saying to myself, I've got to learn more about my aunt and her artworks. When I first started looking at the internet and other sources of information on Sybil, there was very little, a few bits and pieces here and there. And if I found a book or a document, which you would find is a listing of um, artists, mostly men, and Sybil sort of interspersed in between there. And then there's, they don't really talk much more about her. So there really has not been, uh, up until 2018, very much written about Sybil. A few people mentioned her in various writings along the way, but didn't really go into a lot of detail on her life. So I had to ask some questions. How is it that Attic's art remains hidden from the world and her art is not included in collections of the finest museums and art galleries in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean and the world? I also said, you know, how is it that Attic has not been researched and written about as a significant treatise on this artist to date? So the issue really, I think, is the fact that Natek did not leave a diary or write a memoir or produce an autobiography that she left behind for the people to see. All she left behind for people to see were her artworks. But those artworks are in personal homes and small collections here and there and not available to the public. And Trinidad Tobago does not have an institution undertaking systematic research into the history of artists at Trinidad Tobago. And there has been a lack of significant accessible body of information on ATEC in major institutions in her home and country and abroad. And there's not been a formal catalog resume published on her artworks. And so the challenge for the biographer, myself in particular, is finding and locating a large enough source of original primary source documents, photographs, artworks that span her life, entire life. And fortunate for me, some of this information and much of this information was in the family and I just had to go digging for it. So documenting her family influences and journey through life was part of my journey as well. Finding out more about her family, my family in particular, and how they influenced Sybil's life. Right. Identifying uh, the artists who influenced her the most, who were her teachers? How did she learn to paint and draw? Um, taking family collection of photographs, which many people have in their homes, but they can't identify the people or the places and dates in the photographs. Finding a large enough collection of original artworks and to describe her entire oeuvre of art is also a challenge. Researching the provenance of each artwork that is found, dating the artworks so we know what period they're from. Documenting her artistic style, media, um, subject of interest through time is also an interesting point. And learning about what she thought about art through her writings and interviews with her. So as the first part of my research, I was looking into the family. Who were the Ateks? How did the Atek name came to be? And we know that the original man, Mr. Chun Atak, who became Louis Atek, came from China. He had a wife and they had two children. Um, and they traveled on a large uh, three-masted sailing ship to Trinidad. And they landed there in the British colony of Trinidad and Tobago. And they settled in a place called Princess Town, where they had four children three girls and one boy, the youngest being Philip Charles Attek. Now, Philip Charles Attek, take the story down a bit further, he marries Elizabeth Attek, and in Elizabeth George becomes Elizabeth Attek, my grandmother, and they together in Princess Town have two children. The family then moves to Tableland, where they have two more children, including Sybil, they moved to Rio Claro, where they had four more children, and eventually the capital city of Trinidad and Tobago, Port of Spain, where my father, who was the third last of the, of the family, and you can see Sybil is the third eldest in the family, and they have their respective family members. So they settled into this region in South Trinidad, and I've uh, discovered properties uh, located both in Princess Town. Uh, along with a shop owned by Mr. Louis Attek. And of course, um, he owned uh, estate land in North Trace in the center of the map there, which is, which is where Sybil was born. And then the family moved to Rio Claro in the east and her father had a cocoa estate in the east. So Sybil grew up on a cocoa estate. And here is the house of the family where Sybil grew up. 
nestled in the forested south of Trinidad. Now, I also had all of these art catalogs, documents, newspaper articles, etc., and I had to figure out how to do with all of that. So I put them into a research uh, database uh, and digitized and transcribed all of that information. And what you're looking at here is just one year, 1969. It's a lot of information. When I started to read through this information, I came across this article by a Colombian art critic, Sir Enrique Bonaventura, who wrote of Atec, saying that Sybil Atec, who combines technical skill and great artistic maturity, is almost the only one who might be termed a professional artist amongst those who paint in Trinidad. Sybil Atec is who is perhaps Trinidad's most richly endowed painter. This is 1951. So, oh, that's interesting. So then I found another article by Harold Simmons from 1963, and he is considered the father of St. Lucian art. And he wrote of Atec saying, Sybil Atec's works may be summed up in two words, a disciplined struggle. Atec has now become one of the brightest stars in the firmament of West Indian art. Wow, that's a powerful set of statements. And then from 1984, after Sybil's passing, Nina Squires, who was a friend of Sybil's and an artist, wrote, the career of Sybil Attic dominates the history of the development of art in Trinidad and Tobago. At this point, I knew that I had a very important personality in Trinidad that I needed to do more research on and to write about. What I also found amongst the artifacts was this catalog from 1964, which was the 21st anniversary of the Trinidad Art Society. And in that catalog, it also chronicles the first 21 years of the Trinidad Art Society. And in there, it also mentions the, the first committee of the Art Society, which includes both Sybil Attic and her sister, Patricia Attic. And on the right-hand side, you can see there the listing of the first uh, set of presidents of the Art Society, of which Sybil was president from 1962 to 64. What's important is that Sybil was not only the inspiration for founding of the Art Society, but it, she was a key player in the art scene in Trent Tobago and in the, in the, the Art Society and Sybil were hand in hand. She supported it and nurtured it, it nurtured her as well. Again, we had a lot of family photographs and this is an issue with everybody. They've got family photographs. You look at the photographs and you say that, you know, photographs worth a thousand words, but in context, what is the context of these photographs? So let me give you some examples of my research. Here is a photograph that I found amongst them and a bunch of ladies with some men and okay, what is this about? So I asked my father while he was still alive, who this, what is this photograph about? And he said, well, that's the Field Naturalist Club. Oh. Interesting. What's the Field Naturalist Club? Go and Google them. So I contact the Field Naturalist Club and I ask them to send me some information. And I eventually get the minutes of meeting from June 11th, 1931, where Sybil Attic and Olga Attic were elected as members of the Trinidad Field Naturalist Club. Hmm. Interesting. I go on and read a statement just below that. And it goes on to say that he continued to say that whilst he had great pleasure in welcoming the ladies. He hoped that they had not joined for the, merely the fun of going on excursions, but to work to do their bit for the furthering of the progress of society. And I said to myself, wow, what a statement. I wonder what this really means. And what I discovered in researching this further, and I went back to them and got the minutes for the entire year, I discovered that this photograph represents the first lady members of the Trinidad Field Naturalist Club, admitted as members, of which Sybil, her sister Rita, who is uh, the other lady squatting down in front, and her sister Olga, who is at the top and the back, are all members of the Field Naturalist. And this is indicative of Sybil. He was breaking ground, not only as an artist, but as a woman in society, uh, where the, many of these institutions were mostly just men, and she was leading the way break those barriers. And this is evident in all of the work that she did throughout her career. We also know from other articles that Sybil went to study in Peru from 1941 and 42. And she studied with people like Professor Raul Pro, sculpture, and also studied with Julia Codesido, art. And we know that uh, Codesido is known to be amongst the same group of artists that try to represent the people of the nations of the 
of Central America, including people uh, like um, as other major artists of the region. Diego Rivera is included in that category. We also found amongst her artifacts, a series of these drawings. And I'm looking at these drawings and I'm saying, these are quite interesting. These are from Peru from 1941, 42 period. There's another one here. And I'm saying, what does this really mean? In doing further research, I discovered this article written from August 6, 1944, where Sybil was, was delivering a lecture on Peruvian art at Bishop High School. I then discovered by looking at these panels again, that these were her presentation deck, not PowerPoint, of course. They were drawings that she used to illustrate her lecture. And if you take a look at these drawings, you'll notice names of places on there. And if you Google Earth them, you find where she went in Peru. She traveled quite a bit through Peru. This is just the central part of Peru. We have more drawings that show north and south as well. Also, I found this photograph of a painting. And I'm looking at this photograph. I'm saying, like, um, is this Sills painting? Like, what, what painting is this? I go to Trinidad in 2020 to visit a home that have some Sibylatic artworks. And as I go up through a stairwell, I look over my shoulder. And what do I find is this painting. In the bottom left-hand corner, Sibylatic 1942. And you can see that it matches with this Photograph. It's not exactly the same, so there must have been at least two paintings with the same scene. But it is interesting because it, it this painting is painting that illustrates Sybil's transition from the portraiture art that she learned earlier, I'll come back to, and the way she went on to represent people later in her career. Here's another photograph. Here is Sybil with a bust a clay bus. Well, we know how she learned how to do this from Professor Raul Pro. But when was this photograph taken? Who is the subject of the bust? What was the purpose of this photograph? I went on to find the Art Society's catalog from 1944. And in that catalog, it shows Sybil su submitted three items, which were sculptures, of which one, it, two are ladies, and one is a man. Well, of course, that sculpture was a man, Dr. A. H. McShine. So I went and found Dr. A. H. McShine, Arthur Hutton McShine, who happens to be the father of Kiniston McShine, the curator, chief curator at MoMA. So this photograph is a bust of Dr. McShine from the 1944 November exhibition, the first exhibition, November exhibition, which is the annual exhibition of the Trinidad Art Society. So here you see how I build a context around the photograph. Here's another photograph of Sybil. What's the subject? Uh, who is the person next to her? Um, when was this done? So I went Googling and I came across this picture of Grant's tomb. So now I know that this scene, the background is Grant's tomb in New York City. And I went to contact Washington University and I got Sybil's university transcripts. And on the transcript, it says that she went to Columbia University and studied there philosophy and English literature in the summer of 1945. So I now know this is the summer of 1945. It's in front of Grant's tomb. Who is the person standing next to her? Well, with my genealogical work with the family, I discover that this is cousin Arthur Young. Arthur Young was a student at Columbia University in 1945, her cousin. So that's what this photograph is all about. Again, I had lots of paintings and drawings and sketches of Sybils and I'm saying, okay, what do I do with all this stuff? I eventually went out and I purchased access to a professional art database where I loaded all the artwork images in. I've also documented their provenance, dated the artworks, titled the artworks and documented them well. And so now there are over 720 of the artwork of Sybil in this database covering her entire life from the beginning of the art career uh, when she first started doing art right through to her passing in 1975. And I've also, with this database, recreated as many exhibitions as I can find that Sybil participated in. And I've discovered that she participated in over 76 exhibitions 
of which 20 of them were solo exhibitions of hers, and she did 37 international exhibitions. Even today, an artist would be challenged to achieve that many exhibitions, both contributing solo and international exhibitions in a lifetime. And here is a person coming out of the Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean, where there really wasn't a history of art and art activity to be doing all of this activity, uh, or these exhibitions. And I've tried to recreate those exhibitions. Part of the journey is building a chronology. What happened first, second, third along the way and uh, putting dates to everything. So there was a Word document initially created and all of this effort that I did in, in pulling all this information together eventually has ended up in the exhibition catalog for this particular exhibition in the center of the catalog is a timeline of Sybil's life. And so this is an illustration of the major events. So you can go to the website, uh, the Art Gallery of Burlington, and download the catalog. And in the catalog, there is this, the, um, the centerpiece that shows this timeline. I won't go into it now, but what I've done there is uh, illustrate the major events in her life, the major exhibitions, and of course, her artistic period of evolution throughout her life is also included there. Early works of Sybils. So we know that Sybil first school, uh, art school, was at the Regent Street Polytechnic Institute in London, England from 1935 and 1936. I have some catalogs from that particular institution at that time period showing the type of environment that, that she would be in and the teachers who were teaching there at the time. And we have a whole series of portraits done by Sybil during that time period. And you can see that she is learning how to do portraiture artwork in the beginning part of her career. And she's practicing that. And she did a lot of portraits of family members and friends. And I just wanna make note of two of them here right now, knitting and younger brother, because they'll come up a bit later as well. In 1939, Trinidad and Tobago holds the very first major group exhibition, which over 60 artists participate in, in June of 1939. And Sybil Attic contributed four artworks to this exhibition, of which one is entitled, entitled Father, that we know about. This particular painting, Father, was in this newspaper article, is the very first newspaper article that I found that features an artwork and description of Sybil Attic as an artist. This artwork is included here in the Art Gallery of Burlington exhibition. This is my grandfather, Sybil's father, from 1939. In this exhibition here in Burlington, we also have some early works of Sybil from 1943. This is Hearts Cut, where the family had a piece of land, and you can see Sybil painted herself into the center of this artwork. Additionally, this artwork is also in the exhibition, The Thatched Hut, from 1943, it may represent the house of the family or in the area where she was at Hearts Cut. In 1944, the newly formed Trinidad Art Society holds their very first exhibition. And this may well be the only surviving catalog from that exhibition. And Sybil contributed a number of different artworks of which Younger Brother and Knitting, which are shown here as with check marks, I showed you earlier. There's another artwork that was included in this exhibition, the Emperor Valley Botanical Gardens, which this artwork is included here in Burlington in this exhibition. It's a beautiful, very small um, landscape of the Botanical Gardens, and Sybil again paints herself into this scenery. Sybil went to Washington University to get her Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, and I contacted the university, not only to get her university transcripts, but I also got the yearbook. And here you can see Sybil's picture in the yearbook, and again, the class where she'd be studying. When she returns from her uh, getting her Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, she holds her first set of trio solo exhibitions. So she has three solo exhibitions in home at home in Trinidad in 1948. The first of which is at the Public Library in Port of Spain. And we have the catalog from this exhibition. And it shows that over 50 oils and watercolors were exhibited in this exhibition. And here is one of the paintings, again, included here at the Art Gallery of Burlington, the painter from 1947. Again, this is from her days in art school. 
Now, this photograph of this painting is an interesting one because we found this photograph. I thought I would never find this painting. And then somebody contacts me from Trinidad saying somebody contacted them from somewhere in Canada. And so they gave me their email address. I contacted this person who happened to be just outside of Winnipeg, Manitoba, and said, look, I found this painting in a thrift store outside of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Wow. So she said, you know, you are the nephew of the artist. I will sell it to you. So I obtained this artwork and it's now exhibited also here at the Art Gallery of Burlington. And it was also recently featured in Berlin, Germany at a major exhibition. The second exhibition was in South Trinidad at the San, San Fernando Town Hall. And in this exhibition, another catalog we have for that exhibition as well. And this particular artwork was included in that exhibition. I just want to show you a few of them. Barbara from 1946. And this one here, the horn player from 1947. Then she holds her third solo exhibition at the Normandy Hotel in Port of Spain. And we don't have a catalog from that exhibition, but we do have a beautiful um, uh, critique of the exhibition done by Marguerite Wyke, who was a fellow artist. And she talks a great deal about the fact that she is not just doing art with paint in raw garnish color, but she is she's her her paint style is different. And the reality you know, is just a starting point for her imagination. Um, you know, and one does not need to know, be told that she had sculpted because her artworks look like they've been sculpted. Color is delicious, economy of line, a lot of interesting statements come out of these uh, various critiques of Sybil. And this is from 1948. Another artwork included in the exhibition of the Art Gallery of Burlington here is Woman in Striped Dress from 1946. Here's another artwork, The Laborer, which is not in this exhibition, uh, but was also recently found by somebody out of an uh, auction in New York, sorry, in London, England. Now, very important thing occurred. In 1955, Sybil Attek was the first West Indian artist to be included in the Royal Academy of Arts exhibition in London, England, with an artwork called Still Life with Fruit. Still Life with Fruit has been in our family for years. And I've seen this artwork and I was looking at this artwork. I'm saying, wow, this is an interesting artwork. Who does it re represent? Like, what does it represent? And it, to me, it looked like, you know, Cezanne, but, you know, okay, interesting. So I got her university transcripts and in the university transcripts, it says that her thesis was understanding Cezanne, submitted February 1948. So this artwork was her university thesis from Washington University. And this was one of the requirements for graduation. And this artwork, um, the British Council sent a letter congratulating Sybil on her achievement for being included in this major exhibition in London, England. Not only that, but in 1955, Princess Margaret visited Trinidad. And here you see a picture of Sybil being introduced by Sir Hubert Rance, the governor of Trinidad Tobago, to Princess Margaret. And I know a little bit about this conversation because here he is saying to Princess Margaret, here is the artist, the first West Indian artist to be included at the Royal Academy in London, England. There happens to be a film of that particular event, Pathé News. And in that film, there is a two second view of Sybil at that event as well. Sybil Attic did a lot of drawing and sketches throughout her career. Here are some photographs of Sybil where she's actually sketching. And this story goes that Sybil did not go anywhere without her sketchbook. Here's another photograph of Sybil with her sketchbook with uh, another artist observing her. Now, this particular sketch is in the exhibition here in Burlington. It's of Shango. Again, cluster of houses. And these are you know, her preparatory sketches. She goes out into the scenery and the environment in Trinidad, and she is continuously capturing the image of that on the piece of paper 
so she can go back and reproduce those as her artworks. Again, sailing boats and people. Three people at a bridge. I actually found the artwork for this particular uh, sketch in Trinidad. This particular piece, mangrove roots and boat are included in the Art Gallery of Burlington exhibition, along with this Manzanilla drawing. Along with St. Joseph's Convent schoolgirls, because Sybil, being an art teacher in Trinidad at St. Joseph's Convent, did a lot of drawings of her students. Now, Sybil holds three international solo exhibitions in 1959, this time internationally. And the first one is at the Commonwealth Institute in London, England. And the person who writes the introduction for her is Pierre Lelong. Pierre Lelong is a French neo-impressionist painter who happened to have been in Trinidad during the wartime period and was her art teacher for a short period of time. I have taken a look at this catalog and tried to reconstruct the artworks from this exhibition so I can reconstruct her exhibitions. And here is one of those artworks, Pan Beaters, and it is at the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago in their collection. The second international exhibition that same year in July was in New York City in 1959. And here is another artwork from the trio of exhibitions, Indian Festival. This is in the National Museum and Art Gallery collection in Trinidad and Tobago. It represents the Indian Festival, Jose. Then she holds the third international exhibition in the same year in October at the Institute of Jamaica in Kingston, Jamaica. And here, the catalog introduction is by Edna Manley. Edna Manley is a powerhouse of art in Jamaica, also the wife of the prime minister of the country. And here's a photograph of Sybil with Edna Manley standing in front of one of Sybil's paintings. And I've managed to find a nice color image of that particular painting from 1956, Banana Carriers. Unfortunately, that is supposed to be at the University of, of the West Indies, Mona, Jamaica, but nobody in the library there who have the inventory showing it being there can find that painting today. So I'm still looking for it. If anybody knows where it is, please let me know. Here, Swamp Birds, again, 1958 by Sybil. This represents the Carony Swamp. She also did commission murals. Oh, excuse me. The first one was done in 1951. It's called A Story of Rum, which represents the Fernandez Industrial Complex, which, which is located at the Fernandez Industrial Complex, was commissioned by Joseph Fernandez to go and represent the Forest Park Sugar Estate where he had the uh, rum making facility. So you can see here the scene of the cutting of the cane, the loading of the cane on the carts, uh, um, ox carts and also um, tractors taking to a scale house in the center of the image you see the pile of cane with a crane lifting it into the crushing house where it's then juiced and then they make the rum and you can see on the left hand side the truck leaving with the rum this piece is 18 feet by 12 feet in size this drawing is included in the exhibition here in Burlington this drawing is representing um, a concept for a mural that represents the folk dances of Trinidad and Tobago. And you can see the man in the bottom right-hand corner with a camera and his girlfriend, I guess, uh, observing this dancing of the limbo. Here is the only photograph that I can find of that mural that's located, that was supposed to be, was put in at the Bel Air Hotel in Trinidad near to the Piarco Airport. That building has since been torn down and renovated, so I think this is lost. Sybil was hired to be the Arts and Crafts Coordinator when they were building the brand new Hilton Hotel in Port of Spain in Trinidad, and she was commissioned to do two terracotta bar reliefs. 
the one you see before you is called city life. There's a second one opposing this one on the other side in another portal called country life. Unfortunately, they've renovated the hotel and they've put pot lights over it now. So it's not as visible, uh, as nicely visible as it should be. But here is an actual image of this artwork. It's 37 feet wide by three and a half feet high. In order for you to get a better image of it, I have it animated. Hopefully it, the animation is not too jerky on your screen. It took her one year to create these two bar reliefs from two tons of clay. And it features the people and the life that a tourist would see when they come to Trinidad and Tobago and they come into the hotel, they get a representation of what they would see as they travel through the, the city. And the other bow relief, it's about traveling through the countryside. Some major artworks of Sybil Attic. Can't talk about an artist without her art, right? So here is a sketch. This sketch is included in the Art Gallery of Burlington's exhibition. This sketch is Sybil uh, drawing out the concept for this artwork, which is located at the Central Bank of Grand Tobago, Ballet Dancers from 1956. Also, she did this beautiful artwork called Laborers, 1960 which was again a concept piece that she was doing at the time when uh, she did the, the large terracotta bar relief, similar subject. Here you see men holding in the same net with fish, a lady with bananas on her head, carrying it, as well as a uh, man and woman who are cutting and loading cane onto a cart. In 1962, in the year of Trinidad and Tobago's independence, Sybil does this painting of the traditional old time carnival of dragons and devils. And at the same time, in the newspapers as well as magazines, there are drawings of this artwork featured and which illustrates how important this artwork was at the time in Trinidad and Tobago when it was first represented, presented. Sybil also did Stick fighting, which is another traditional activity in Trinidad and which he did several different artistic stylistic renditions of stick, stick fighting. This is a portrait of another artist from Trinidad, Althea McNish. Althea McNish, so is, when she was interviewed, said that Sybil used to come to her house to pick her up ever since she was 10 years old and take her to her home to paint and draw along with the other sisters and other art people, artists, interested artists at the time. Well, in 1969, Sybil did this portrait of Althea, which is now owned by the Whitworth Gallery in Manchester. And it was featured in the Althea McNish Color is Mine exhibition that went out of London, England to the Whitworth Gallery because they own this artwork of Althea. Here in Burlington, this artwork, Carney Swamp at Sunset, is also featured here in Burlington. The Carney Swamp is a very special feature in Trinidad with these red scarlet ibis that come into nest at sunset every day. Also, Sybil dared to paint a lobster. And this was done in 1967. And here is a photograph of one of the... Um, directors at the Art Gallery of Burlington with me at the exhibition standing in front of this particular artwork. Another artwork of Sybil's from 1963 was included in a number of exhibitions, including in uh, Chase Manhattan Bank in New York, as well as in, in Brazil. And this artwork, Penetrating Insects, is featured at the Art Gallery of Burlington. She also sort of evolved her art um, in the latter period after she went to Provincetown in 1967 and started to use more acrylic paints and started to go into more abstract artworks. Family unit from 1972. But again, in 1972, here she features the Moon Dancers, which is again, the Jose Festival in Trinidad. And you can see the 
tajas in the constructed taja, the box in the center there. The moon dancers are those half moon round things that are on the shoulders of the dancers, the drummers and the people observing the event. And here is the hero piece from the Art Gallery of Burlington's exhibition, Sybil Self-Portrait from 1973. In this self-portrait, she portrays the image of herself. She also knows at this point in time that she has cancer. And she is also recipient in the same year of the Shaconia Medal Gold for her contribution to art, Trishina and Tobago. And I believe that this portrait is her last what she paints to represent herself to the people of Trinidad and Tobago as a last self-portrait. This particular artwork was featured recently at the Art Gallery of Ontario in the Fragments of Epic Mem Memory exhibition. Sybil Atek was also an art teacher at five different schools in Trinidad, but she also taught throughout the Caribbean. And here is a photograph of Sybil from a newspaper article from St. Lucia from 1963 where she's explaining to the local artists how they can improve their art. Here's a picture of Sybil with artworks on the wall from students of hers. And here are some quotes. So what I've done is I've contacted the students, so many of the students who've reached out to me or I've contacted them through Facebook and they've told me her story. Let me start at the beginning, this one lady says. Miss Atek, that is how we used to call her. Miss Attic encouraged her students to explore art outside the classroom, go down to the wharf, to the beaches, capture stimulating images. She was very much into folklore. I remember her assignment for, was for us to draw a scene from one of the folklore stories. I remember Miss Attic taking a paintbrush and she said to me, let me show you how we can improve this drawing. Or I relate Miss Atek's guidance to my art design students, encouraging them to push beyond their comfort zone and to risk creative disappointments in order to grow and evolve as artists. These are quotes from her students, and one of which obviously here at the bottom was also, is currently also an art teacher. And here you see a photograph of Sybil with one of her students receiving an award, 1970 at St. Francois Girls High School. Sybil dies on April the 15th, 1975. This date is significant because this date prophetically is UNESCO World Art Day. The Sunday Guardian writer on hearing of Sybil's passing writes, if we, the community, have lost much with her passing, we have gained immeasurably from her undying contribution in the sphere of art. Sybil Atek has not only given us a greater awareness of the role of the West Indian artist in the Caribbean, but she has left us with an ever-expanding form of expression, expressing our own West Indian culture. Even though she was gratified to receive the Shakodian Medal in 1973, she would doubtless be more gratified if her shining example continues to influence and inspire the growth of West Indian art and culture. Upon hearing of Sybil's passing, M.P. Allen, a fellow artist and director of culture at the Ministry of Education and Culture of Trinidad and Tobago wrote, Sybil was not only a mother of visual arts of Trinidad and Tobago, a title which is due her because of her constant encouragement to upcoming artists as an art educator, but also because of the extremely high quality of her personal work over the decades. In almost every aspect of art, art activity, she was to be found encouraging and directing these activities. You can see Sybil's involvement and activity throughout her career as an artist, as a teacher, as a contributor to helping other artists in the region expressed in this letter that was written to Sybil's mother on M.P. Allen's hearing of her passing. Let me take you back a little bit to 1951. In 51, a BBC broadcast entitled Art in the Caribbean by John Harrison, artist from the British Council officer, he wrote, he discussed in this article the finding that first great West Indian artist. And he predicted that an artist would rise out of the many artists in the Caribbean to become considered one of the great artists of the world. 
So who should be declared that great West Indian artist or in current vernacular, the great Caribbean artist? Well, in, nine, in 2022, Fight on Press published a book on great women painters. And in this book, they surveyed over 300 artists from 60 plus countries spanning five centuries. And they included artists like Hulda Guzman from Dominican Republic and Carbon Herrera from Cuba and Frida Kahlo from Mexico and Emily Carr from Canada, as well as Sybil Atek from Trinidad and Tobago. Here is the artwork that was featured in that book, The Flag Waver, Count of Sailors from 1958. So before this biography project of Sybil Attic, she was almost lost to history with just a few mentions and publications here and there. And now she's been hailed as a great painter. I've prepared several manuscripts. One manuscript is a biography project that explains to anyone else doing a project like this what I did to come this far. I have a manuscript as well for the family, the Attic family story. And I have a manuscript also about Sybil. And that's where I've focused the latter part of my effort. And this exhibition is telling the story of Sybil Attic. So here in Burlington, we have this wonderful exhibition near to Toronto of over 95 artworks, drawings, many art facts, and lectures and visiting academics came to see this exhibition under the opening. And here we see Suzanne and myself collaborating together in the construct and the formation of this exhibition where we are inquiring and helping support each other in bringing this exhibition to the people of Burlington and to Canada and the rest of the world. And here are some photographs from the exhibition itself. So because many of you may not be coming to Toronto or to Burlington to see this exhibition, just to give you a sense of the exhibition space available at the Art Gallery of Burlington. Here's another scene from the exhibition on the walls. Here are many of the portraits that are featured along with the vitrines that are shown in front here and in the vitrines, you see many of her drawings, sketches. On the wall, a number of her artworks as well featured, as well as these artworks in the center. And of course you see the artifacts featured here in the center as well. These artworks that I've talked to you about are also featured in the exhibition. So once again, here is Sybil Attek. This is the person we're talking about. She is the center of this exhibition. It's Sybil Attek, my aunt. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share with you my journey and the artwork of my aunt, Sybil. Thank you so much, Keith. It's been an honor to work with you and uh, all the rigorous study that you've done on your aunt. And every single time I hear you speak, there's new details and new nuances that uh, they get teased out uh, about her life. And uh, we are so grateful to have it at the Art Gallery of Burlington. And the exhibition is gonna be up until January 7th. So uh, anyone who is in the GTHA, please do come by and see it. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much, Keith, for your time. Well, thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Your whole team at the Art Gallery have been fantastic. Uh, it was a great collaboration to work with you and to have this wonderful opportunity to bring Sybil Attack to life here in Burlington. Yeah, and me with you and your family as well. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. All right, everyone, have a good night. Good night. Thanks.